Des Moines and all of Central Iowa, welcome to Max World Live. Max World is your world. Every day we talk about the issues and topics that matter most to you. And as always, it's your voice we want to hear in Max World. So join the conversation by calling 515 244 0077. And now, here's the host of Max World Live, J. Michael McCoy. Yeah, you, you do that great. All right, six minutes after the uh, hour of four o'clock. Uh, good afternoon. I'm J. Michael McCoy, and this is Max World. On the Truth 99.3, we appreciate you taking the time to listen. Perhaps you're a new listener to this radio station. This is a biblical based preaching, teaching, and social commentary station. From 11 at night to 11 in the morning, we have some of the world's most gifted. Teachers, teachers of the Bible, some local, some national. And then at 11 in the morning, we switch gears to what you would ta- what you would call conservative talk radio. There's one exception to that, though, you failed to mention uh, the local noon hour, you know, from 12 to one. We do have oh, local yeah, yeah, pastors yeah, yeah, and yeah. teachers. We have a Pastor Michael Mudloff, West Kirk Presbyterian, um, Pastor Spencer Karoff of First Church of the Open Bible are both local pastors that are on during your lunch hour. Yeah. So if you want to hear great Bible teaching on your lunch break. Uh, 99.3 mm. is a good place for that as well. Good yeah, point. that's true. I forgot about that. Sorry. That's okay. And uh, the only difference between us and them, whoever they are, they can't say the name of Jesus on the radio. Because when they do, and they do it too often, the phone lines light up, the liberals go crazy, the progressives go nuts, and the advertisers cancel. Well, they won't do that to us. I mean, if you want to complain that you're hearing the name of Jesus on a Christian radio station... Uh, don't try to get a gun because your background check ain't going to go through because your mental health isn't there. If you're going to listen to a Christian station, you're going to hear the name of Jesus. Not a lot. I won't bury in it. We're here to teach, not to preach. (laughs) And we're here to share. Today, we talk about, I mean, during three to five, we talk a lot about news and local events and things that are going on. And today we're just kind of we're just kind of in this gun thing. And I know we're going to talk a little bit with Tom Coates. He's here about the Iowa presidential race later on and some of the stuff that Hillary's done because we've been off a couple of weeks. We have. We yeah. have. And Mac, before, before we move on, let me say I was I've been invited every year for a number of years to uh, give a talk at the up at Iowa State at their honors program. And I got a copy today of the other honors programs that are on. And <laughs> you talk about outright indoctrination of our young minds um i I couldn't believe some of the some of the topics of some of these classes that they give credit for um how uh, religion has been used in the media to uh to coerce people into certain areas of behavior in the past um the uh, science of global warming uh oh my gosh you know how you know certain ones on feminism uh, you know, I mean, I, I should have brought the list, but I, it, it was a big reminder to me. We know that our young people in the public schools and in the colleges are being indoctrinated. But as I look down this list of, of uh, classes that are were them, and these are the brightest and best, the honors program up there at Iowa State. And it's supposed to be a little bit more of a conservative university than, uh, than some of the others are. But, you know, they've got this, what's the guy's name up there in charge of their religion? Oh, um, um, yeah. Hector, Hector Avalos. Avalos. Yeah, thanks. And, um, of course, Hector is a very bright guy. That's not the disqualifying factor. No, Obama's a very bright guy. Yeah, but he's he's an avowed atheist, and he's in charge of their religion program up there. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah that's just, I mean, well. you better laugh because otherwise you just cry. No wonder they're, they're turning out uh, young uh, March. You, you, I heard you as I was walking in. You said, how can they believe that Obama is sincere and a nice person yeah. and doing a good job? And uh, they, they dumb them down. 
they, 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 they substitute education for indoctrination in our public schools. And thank God that a number of our citizens, our Christian citizens, are choosing to educate their kids either in religious schools or homeschool. Yeah. Well, you know, and just a kudos, though, to one of the churches up in Ames, Cornerstone Church in Ames, has done a fantastic job. They've had a great student ministry there because you're right. It's a, it's a very we lived in Ames for a while. Love the town, uh, love the campus culture, all that kind of stuff. But you do have a very strong, growing atheist, secular humanist movement on the campus. But Cornerstone Church has done a great job of building a huge college ministry um, that's unafraid to preach the gospel um, a couple of years ago they had apologetics conference really trying yeah. to equip students to Good. to understand their faith and stand up for their faith in a respectful way uh, because it's a hostile campus it really is a hostile ca- hostile campus but um, god is still doing stuff you know it sometimes with news talk the news so many times is so bad it's hard for us to see sometimes uh, where, where god is in fact moving because it doesn't always get it doesn't always get seen it's harder to see sometimes. Like we can be very discouraged. But I just add that, not to, no, I agree not to counter. But it, it's, it, no, it's not a counter. It, it's, you're affirming what I said. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But, you know, Chris, I, I, I don't disagree with you. So yeah. don't take this as a 180 difference. Okay. But I also think that God is more obvious than he might have ever been because he's so rarely um, worshipped in public. And so when somebody does that, I mean, a, a friend of mine and I were at Maxie's restaurant. I'll have to take you there sometime. But Maxie's, what, 60 years, 50 years, it's been over there on Grand. Yes. Yeah. Since the 60s. And there's this, this retired elderly couple. I don't, I'm trying to be PC here, but they're just a couple old fee folks, older than me, uh, very talkative and loving. And they were right next to us. So we couldn't help but, you know, here their food comes and they pray. So before I left, I went over to him and said, I just want you to know how honored I was that you sat there and w- would pray in public. And, oh, that cu- what a neat couple they were. I bet I sat with them for 15 minutes and while their food got cold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, glad he finally left. That's right. <laughs> Probably. Would you take this back and warm it up? But, so, so, you know, when things like that happen, yeah. and I noticed those things in restaurants. When people used to come to my restaurants and they'd say grace before their meal, I would go over immediately and thank them for doing that. Sometimes I'd even, like, bring them dessert or something. We need to encourage ourselves to pray in public. Well, Mac, the darker, uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, The darker uh, the planet gets, the brighter the light of the true Christians will shine. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It's also easier to extinguish them once they shine brighter and brighter, though. Uh, This administration is, I know you were talking about it earlier, Mac, and I know we're going to talk about his latest venture into changing the uh, you know fundamental change of our country is what yeah. he announced and uh, certainly has been about it for the last seven years but uh, uh, unfortunately those are the ones that I'm afraid Frank will be targeted more easily all right let's talk about his announcement today he announced plans to expand background checks to almost anyone buying a firearm from a dealer and make other gun rule changes he did this via executive action bypassing Congress and fueling an election year fight with Republicans. Everybody should have to abide by the same rules, Obama says. Does anybody else hear that dripping with hypocrisy? Everybody should have to abide by the same rules. It's... um uh, did you notice that there was a tear in his eye, Mac? Oh, have I? Oh, yeah, I've seen that. I do. I. I. I'm sorry. Is that real? You no, mean that crocodile? I think the whole thing is theater. You mean that crocodile tear? Yeah, you think that was fake? What he wants to do is he he is saying that background checks are going to make a difference, and the background checks are going to be specifically targeted to mental health. All right, I get that. Some of these mass murders. Denver, Sunny or not Sunny Brook, uh, Sandy Hook. Uh, some of these were done by people who we later found out had mental illness. But and I don't know if you were listening earlier, but Paul called up and made a uh, or no, it wasn't Paul, Richard. Richard, yeah. Richard called up and made a very good point. This is going to be an interesting test because we have these HIPAA laws. Mm-hmm. And my doctor is not supposed to be able. It doesn't have to share with the government anything like this. But. If I want a gun, now the doctor's got to say that I'm 
okay and not mentally ill. Well, who gets to determine that? And one of the things we were talking about, uh, Tom, okay, so I'm a recovering alcoholic, 2,067 days without a drink. Is that a mental illness issue? Well, it depends on how broadly you define it. Well, and I think some of this groundwork was laid back with the, uh, with the institution of what we now euphemistically call Obamacare, Mac, yeah. the Affordable Care Act. I think that uh, the doctor's uh, requirement to do some reporting uh, was, was laid in and codified at that point. There were some people that raised the issue, but it didn't get a lot of play. I think that uh, this, these executive actions, which he thinks won't be unconstitutional, but it won't be hard to, um, you know, for a subsequent president perhaps to undo this if you get the right person in there. If you get, you get, you get a Hillary, <clears throat> you're only going to compound it. it um, I think it will uh, enable uh, a lot of things in this country. It's, it's done incrementally, Mac. Um, you and I and Chris and, and uh, you know, good conservatives, we go out and fight a fight when we see it. You know, and we and we put ourselves out. We think we vanquish it and go on about our lives. The liberals, um, you know, the Ed Fallons out there, um, the Barack Obamas, uh, these kinds of people, they they live on a step by step incremental basis, a and they're very strategic, and they don't go away, and they take small victories. And what this this maybe will not fundamentally transform your or my right to own a gun in this country, but it will start to chip away at it. Yes. And I think that one of the objectives here is eventually to stigmatize uh, gun owners, and I think that will have a, have a place here, too. Yeah, it's also driving gun sales to the roof oh, sure. and stock. Uh, 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 one of the big Winchester, one of the big gun makers are up 26 percent. Their stock is. All right. Uh, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we'll continue this conversation. Also, a little bit about the presidential elections. I know I'm tired of hearing about them, too. We, we got till February 3rd till the caucuses. And then hopefully we don't have to be surrounded by this anymore. Uh, but today it's news. So we'll talk about it and share it with you live here on The Truth. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hi. My name is David Burrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30, right here on webcast1live.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement. Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there.
Rockton Prevention is celebrating 25 years of creating a caring community. We want to say thank you to the tens of thousands of Rock High School mentors that have carried our message of health, love, and encouragement to over 1.5 million children, teachers, and parents. Our mentors teach children methods and skills to prevent bullying and drug use. Thank you to all the school administrators, teachers, and counselors for the opportunity to serve you. Rock on, fair citizens. Rock on. This is Pat McManus for Rock and Prevention, the Richard O. Jacobson Foundation, and this station. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Twenty-one minutes after the hour, good afternoon. I have to remember, uh, it's very important that this show is airing this coming Saturday. And so if you're listening to this show on Saturday from noon to one, um, know that it was recorded live on the 5th, which is a Tuesday. Tom and I are always together on Tuesday afternoon from four to five. And I was listening to our show on Saturday and I realized mm-hmm. that I, 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 I wasn't making people aware of that. And we sounded kind of like a doom cough. Because well, we were talking that about would have what been, it, that would have been a best of. That would have been quite a ways back, wouldn't it? Would have been this last Saturday. Yeah, I don't remember when. Because we didn't shoot a show live this last Tuesday, so that would have been a ways back, yeah. wouldn't it? The last show we done was the one we hijacked and made in a Tom's world. Oh, was that the one you guys had on? Okay, it was when you did the show alone when I was sick. Okay, All and right, Tom, the, the other thing you was mentioning so eloquently. Uh, the thing you was mentioning so eloquently is uh, they're called progressives for a reason. They're willing to be patient. Marx and Lenin was the same way. One was willing to be a little more patient than the other one. So they're going to the same destination, destination utopia, meritopia, whatever you want to call it. And they're going to put enough reasonable restrictions on our guns till we wake up one day and we don't got a right to own a gun. Right. We don't have a right. Yes, yeah. I think you're exactly right, Frank. And it, it is incrementalism. And uh, uh, again, I, I used Ed Fallon and I used Barack Obama as a local and a national uh, example of that. But that is their that is their psychology, and and they're very dedicated. And it would be nice at times if we could be as dedicated to our cause for for God, for conservative American principles, uh, as they are for Marx and Lenin, as Frank mentioned. Uh, we had a caller a little bit ago. Uh, by the way, this is 99.3, The Truth. Thank you for finding us. Thank you for just setting a button in your car. Just try us out. Uh, you won't like everything. I mean, it's like a country music station or a rock and roll station or KIOA or GGO or something. You're not going to like every song. You're going to not like every preacher, not every teacher, not every social commentary guy like me. But I, th- I really think we could be one of your favorite stations. I, I, but but you got to give it a try. You know, I used to be in the restaurant business, and people would come in and they'd have a bad experience. And I did something that very rarely people would do. Chris, I would not only bonus them uh, or not have them pay for the meal that was bad, I'd give them a gift certificate of equal amount so they could come back and have that meal again or any meal they wanted so we could prove to them that we could do a good job. And radio's the same way. Uh, today, we're, we're kind of heavy into the, the Obama administration announcement today that he's going to use an executive action bypassing Congress, uh, which is just going to fuel a fight this year with the Republicans. But he's going to make it mandatory background checks, including uh, mental health. And we had a great caller come in. He didn't want to be on the air, but he told Ron, he said, what about guys with PTSD? Are you going to tell me that a vet who served this country using a gun probably having to fire it at people and maybe having to wake up every morning knowing he took a life. You're telling me this guy now or woman, this person, this American patriot isn't eligible to own a gun because of what the war did to him. I don't know. Plus I don't, you know, Sandy hook. That was not a vet. Uh, What's his name out at uh, Columbine. That wasn't a vet. The guy at the theaters in Denver, that wasn't a vet. I think the last time we had a vet do something stupid was Timothy McVeigh, and that was 22 years ago. You know, we we, we, we had the guy at the, uh, uh, this is a good one, at the military base. Yeah, I know, that's Kansas. what I was going to say. Yeah. But that was a Muslim. That was a Muslim, but, but, but Barack Obama considered that workplace violence. Yeah. yeah yes, he was saying Allah attack. Akbar as he was going to kill the people, and uh, that was workplace violence, I know. Because we, we've been, that, that's, that's the caveat that I don't like here. What determines mental illness 
to the point where you aren't able to hold a gun. That is a very, very dangerous road to go down. Is it because you take Paxil? So all of a sudden now your doctor decides to prescribe to you something for depression. Depression is a mental health issue. And so anybody that's on any type of medication for depression can't own a gun? Well, again, I, you, you're opening up a Pandora's box when you're saying, uh, you know, mental illness, because, you, you know, again, it's a broad definition, and the definition potentially could get broader and broader. Pretty, well, soon, and they'll, pretty soon they'll check your uh, voter ID card, Mac, and if it says Republican, that means that you're mentally unstable and unable to own a gun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, 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 but seriously, how do we go down the road of mental health to own a gun? I mean, I get it. I get it that the guy at the wacko home... The guy who has Down syndrome, the person who's had a brain injury, should not have a gun. Here's a here's a here's an interesting question, and I I, I want to pose this: Why do we why do we want to defend the right to own a gun? I mean, because if the, we don't have guns, the government takes over. I mean, that's why it's in the Constitution. We have a right, right to bear re- arms and to form a militia. Right. The reason it's in the Constitution is so that we can defend ourselves as citizens, as people against our government when they become a, a, a tyrannical threat. That government, kind of thing. foreign or, 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 or local government. Exactly right. I mean, one of the things that made us almost impossible to consider uh, a land invasion by the Japanese, the Germans or anybody else, because our citizens were so heavily armed. Um, uh, and, and it gives us the ability to form, as Max says, the, uh, the armaments of a, of a militia that would defend itself against a, uh, uh, an oppressive government. Uh, absolutely. So I think it's a good fundamental question, but it is why it's the Second Amendment and not the, not the 22nd. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's the problem. We work this thinly veiled right to privacy in the Constitution that wasn't necessarily there from the beginning. Mm. That was capitalized on to bring us abortion. Mm-hmm of this doctor-client, doctor-patient privilege. So now, in an effort to go after guns and mental health and people with mental issues having them, you're going to have to tromp on the doctor-patient privilege, right? Um, yes. 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 Yes, you'll carve out this exemption where yes. the, the rights and the safety of the masses supersede that, that kind of, of uh, a bri- privacy right, Frank. Um, and again, that's the rationale is that they were concerned. Now, we're not concerned enough about the safety of the masses that we would actually do something about the hundreds of thousands. And I'm not exaggerating that number, hundreds of thousands of Muslims that are immigrating into this country every year under Obama. And we're not just talking about Syrians, but other Muslims that come in in mass. And it may just be a coincidence, but over 70 percent of those immigrants, when they do vote, uh, will vote for a Democrat. Uh, very few of them vote, vote, vote for a Republican. Uh, again, maybe that's a coincidence. Maybe I'm just being cynical. But that security of the American public is not a concern for this administration. Uh, it is more cons- In fact, he hoped that the thing out in California would be a workplace violence thing. He put reins on yes. the FBI yes. from declaring it an act of terrorism for quite a while in hopes that they could find some element of suspicion that it was workplace violence versus an act of terrorism. That's the kind of guy we have. He's much more concerned when um, gun violence happens in the hands of a a Republican or something the Republicans do to oppose him than than the missiles that he was that that Iran, which in direct violation to this to the thing that we've done, have shot off missiles that are capable of carrying a nuclear warhead shot a missile at our ship the other day. He doesn't seem to be caring about that. He's going to go ahead and give them $150 billion so that they can fund terrorism in the Middle East and eventually here. Well, Tom, uh, He doesn't you... care about the real safety of America. He's, in, he's intent on the transformation of this country to become a Marxist utopia, as Frank had don't, timed it earlier. Don't you think that immediate impeachment hearings ought to be set up if he... I mean, there was a threat by some Republican leaders to do that. Don't you think it's time to to, to, to push comes to shove and we actually call the, the Republicans bluff, uh, impeach this guy, get, a, get a, you know, get off the snide. It, it, He'd never in effect. Be Are you serious, Frank? Are yes, you just I'm serious. I think, I think the guy ought to be impeached because he's not, he's, he's been sworn to uphold the laws of the land, the Constitution. Well, if you're trampling on the Constitution by executive order, there's no caveat for owning and bearing an arm, as Max said. There's no caveat of mental illness involved. 
I mean, back back when uh, the Constitution, people had to have guns. The militia was the army. The people were potentially the militia, so you had to have arms ready to go to war if called to do so, and you had to have a gun for your uh, ability to eat and provide and protect your family. 30 so, minutes past the hour here on uh, this show. It's uh, Max World Live, and you're listening uh, live on Tuesday the 5th, or you're listening to a replay uh, coming up here on Saturday. And either day, uh, we thank you for listening. If something has changed uh, between now and Saturday, we probably will not re-record the show. So j- just, you know, throw tomatoes at the radio or whatever, because <laughs> we're going to sound funny on that stuff. Hey, but you can call in right now if you have an opinion about any of the, the crazy, wacky, fun things that we've been talking about right now. Uh, 515-244-0077. That's 515-244-0077. And I, I want to point, Richard pointed this out. I think it was Richard who pointed this out. You know, the, the executive order that, that President Obama announced today was more, more than just about gun control. And Matt keeps bringing up the issue of mental health. And I want to point this out that on whitehouse.gov, oh, one let, of the things let, that... Let's, let's go to... Go ahead. Well, wait sorry. a minute, though. No, right, no, this is, this is... But we're missing this if we don't see it. They want to increase mental health treatment and reporting to the background check system. But here's what's interesting about this, is that's not really about guns. That's really about more government-involved involvement in our health care mm-hmm. mm-hmm. um one of one of uh somebody that i've grown to respect a lot and want to hear more from is dr lee heave now she ran for governor yeah, um, we had her in we had her in um she is really sharp on this issue when you see the government increasing its control and involvement in health care mm-hmm. um, you really do go down a very very scary road for our citizens gun gun control or otherwise because look I, I'm going to be honest with you, Tom. I don't own a gun. I don't have any plans to own a gun. I could care less if I get to own a gun or not. Mm-hmm. It's of no interest to me personally. Mm-hmm. But the thing that does scare me a little bit about this is more government involvement in the healthcare system. Because as we all know, um, whether we're at the end of life, beginning of life, or wherever we're at in our, in, our, in our life, when the government is involved in our care, what happens is it's a bureaucratic system. And it's no longer a doctor who cares about you, Tom. Right. It's now the doctor takes your readings and then sends that data off. Mm -hmm. And then some bureaucrat or some administrative person looks at a sheet and says, patient number one, two, three, four, five has these symptoms. Should we take care of them? Yes or no. And they say, well, no, that would be too costly. Now the doctor can't say, but Tom, I've known you for, you know, 25 years and whatever, you know, he Our grandparents he, wouldn't recognize the kind of bureaucracy and requirements and lack of freedom that we have, but they boiled the frog very slowly, they incrementally. Did. And I and, think this uh, is more and, of it. And we will we'll speak out and we'll do this and that, and maybe we'll get some of it rolled back with the Republican president. Um, but it's it's go- and that is you know that comes that comes back around to the whole argument of the frustration with the conservatives, especially the Christian conservatives, and the way that the Republican leadership has abdicated on so many issues. This, and and we could go through the rest of the day and into the night on things that they have abdicated. The spending bill was, uh, was the most recent egregious thing. And that's why many Republicans and even a few Democrats are saying, we want to shake things up. We don't like the way things are going. And that's why Donald Trump, unfortunately or fortunately, depending upon your perspective, is doing as well as he has. National polls out, uh, biggest lead us ever. Twi- twice what uh, what the next one Cruz has. Yeah. 515-244-0077. Your voice is always welcome here on The Truth, 99.3. Uh, we're going to, if guys, if we can, let's put this subject to bed. And when we come back from break, let's talk a little bit about the presidential campaign. And I also want to talk about the fact that the Iowa legislature opens a week from yesterday. And uh, some Republicans have already dropped the gauntlet that uh, funding of Planned Parenthood is going to be on fire right. this year. Right. Uh, remember, tomorrow is the first Wednesday of the month, and what does that mean? That means testify. And tomorrow, John Severson will give his uh, wonderful testimony. Uh, I, I've heard it. it. It's great. It's at the Urbandale Pizza Ranch, noon to one, free of charge, unless you want to eat, and then it's just regular buffet prices. We'll see you tomorrow at Testify, live here from The Truth.
From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. I'm Brian Leach, owner of Service Legends, and my position is Chief Talent Officer. I'm Nicholas Wondershide. I am Bernie Hobbs. And I'm the Service Manager. Marketing Director and Client Relations Manager. Everything that we do is about ensuring that we exceed your expectations. Our clients are important to us, 100% satisfaction. We're not just focused on heating and cooling. That's the easiest part of our job, actually, is fixing furnaces and air conditioners. Everyone that we come in touch with, we want to improve lives. Bottom line is, we've got our installation guarantees, 25% energy savings guarantee, comfort guarantee, temperature selection guarantee, property protection guarantee. 100% satisfaction guaranteed, fixed rate is free. All of those guarantees are backed up with a 100% money back guarantee to hold ourselves accountable to making sure that you get what you're after. Just fixing the problem today, if they have another problem five days down the road, it's still fixed right or it's free. We use what's called straightforward pricing. Our technicians are gonna give you an exact to the penny price on what it's gonna take before they move forward with any repair. That way you know what to expect. It's the same price every day. No surprises. If you get off work at five o'clock in the afternoon, you come home, you realize that, oh, my furnace is broken. Now you need to call somebody out that night. You shouldn't have to pay more for that. We're guaranteeing service 24-7. We run afternoons, evenings, nights, weekends. We're staffed to work that. Phone rings at 3 in the morning. You'll get one of our representatives answering the phone every time. We're not sending you out to Timbuktu in some call center. It's our service legend team members, our mission control team. I'll take a call anytime. And then they answer the phones same way during the day as they do at night. It's a great day at your service company. How can we make you smile? That's the only way to provide true 24-hour service. When you're able to let somebody actually live in their home safely when they weren't able to do that before, where they don't have to stay up at night and worry about is the heat going to come back on? Are we going to freeze the pipes? Is the baby in the room next door going to be sick because they got too cold? When you're able to help somebody overcome challenges like that, that's impacting a life. That makes a difference. I get goosebumps thinking about it. I love the team. I love the people that I work with. <laughs> we have fun, but we work hard. I call them my ambassadors of legendary service. If you could just envision what that is, that's who we're sending to your home. Four thirty-eight, twenty-two 22 minutes before the top of the hour, if you're listening on Saturday, uh, it would be uh, 22 minutes before 1 o'clock. Tom Coates, myself, Chris Roloff, and Frank here on Max World on a, a beautiful afternoon. Uh, right now, it's not bad. I think on Saturday, aren't we just supposed to dip into just like one degree temperatures? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think just, there's moisture coming, and then the temperatures drop after that front moves through, I think. Now, now as a Texas boy, have you gotten <laughs> used to Iowa winters yet? You know, I really like it. I'm not a small person. I'm a, I'm a big guy. So I, I like the cold weather. I really enjoy it. And I like the seasons. I think um, the year is more exciting and more entertaining. I love the winter. I, I love knowing that this is going to be for a few months and then we're going to have spring and summer again. You know, yeah. in the south in Texas, it's there's not much change throughout the year and it's really boring. Yeah. We had a I had a friend who moved out from uh, from Tennessee which you wouldn't think was all that different but in Tennessee they have much more oh, full yeah. 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 seasons yeah. there and he moved to Texas and he would get really depressed during the winter. Um, and they couldn't figure out why, but it was just the missing of the change of seasons can actually do something on your mental. So it, this is good for us to um, Where in Texas did you live, Chris? I am originally a West Texas guy, so I grew up in El Paso. I'm a border kid. Oh, you're real uh, West Texas. Yeah, yeah, real West Texas. And then um, moved to the Dallas-Fort Worth area, met my wife there, and that's well, where I spent I'm most now. of my time in Texas, right in between. Midland. Yeah, Midland. Which was uh, named originally that way because it was midway through the cattle drive from the Fort Worth to yep. El Paso. Yep. And, yep. Uh, of course, the reason it caught on was that they found a lot of oil in the yeah. Permian Basin. And at one point, 20 percent of our energy needs of this country were coming from that little patch of uh, ground out there in oh, West yeah. Texas. Yeah. I remember we used to we used to travel that I-10 from El Paso to Fort Worth every year for the holidays. And I remember all that we call them grasshoppers, you know, the grasshoppers everywhere throughout the desert, all those those what those uh, oil rigs. Uh, just all along the roadside. Yeah, and well, fracking I, is, has rejuvenated. Go ahead, Matt. It has. I hate to tell you this, but I know more about Texas than either one of you. Yeah, okay. I mean, you probably do. Because my favorite show in the world was Dallas. Yes. <laughs> so I, I could tell you anything you want to know. Uh, well, I visited the, uh, the the set. Oh, I did too. What and, a joke. Yeah. <laughs> Who what shot a JR? Joke. Huh? Who shot JR? Yeah, because well, I was Bobby. I always felt so bad for Bobby because Bobby was the good guy. 
At least I thought I was Bobby. I was probably more like JR. JR, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. The Iowa legislature begins their 2016 legislative session a week from yesterday. And uh, some Republicans are vowing for a fight to the end on public funding, your tax dollars funding Planned Parenthood. And they're putting a tremendous amount of pressure on Governor Branstad because he said two cycles ago, and it's been played on this radio station. You can go to uh, different places on Facebook and you can see in a debate, he said that he would work hard to defund uh, the government's money, your money, my money, our money going in to pay for the killing of babies. I had a did you did you read the paper today? I, I did. I, uh, did you see the open letter from the lady from Planned Parenthood? Yes, I did. Oh, what a well! I just I, I had to take a shower, and I just got out of the shower, and I had to take another shower. Now, they Matt, are so they they lie, they lie. Well, this is about women's health. And there was a deceptive video that came out. Yes, and they don't go into specifics about how it was deceptive and how the whole thing was. You know, it was it was edited so you could put it in time, but then the whole thing was posted. I mean, how does, you know, again, they just say in blanket and Hillary says the same thing. A deceptive video came out. And yeah, and I guess half of the, you know, half the people in this country are just drinking the Kool-Aid and they really don't care. Yeah, yeah. And they they jump on the bandwagon, the low information voters. Um, The thing that kills me is the, the number one killer of women is breast cancer. And they don't do mammograms. Right. At, so how do you explain that? <laughs> how? Uh, and I, I would love to get somebody from uh, Planned Parenthood on, and I'd be nice. I'd be nice, but I, I don't know what was her name. Jill, somebody works. Well, Jill there? June was was the head of the uh, Planned Parenthood here in Iowa for a long time. But I think she stepped down, didn't she? Yeah, I just can't remember who wrote the open letter. I don't, I don't remember the with woman's me. name, but yeah, it was it was disgusting, and I read it, and I had the same visceral reaction. Oh, that you did. just the lies, yeah. and 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 you know, and you know, sometimes it's wrong that I say this person lied or this person lied because I'm a, I'm a justice kind of guy. That's kind of my my underlying uh, motivation in most things is to find justice. And I realize that if I tell you that President Obama uh, said that he cares about the American people and I call that a lie, well, that's incorrect. That's my opinion. He gave his opinion. I gave mine. But for someone from Planned Parenthood, to say that they do women's health and they right. don't do mammograms, right. I, I can can I call that a lie? I I I think by normal, I mean, the the law is based on a reasonable man theory, and based upon a reasonable man theory, I think you can call that a lie. You know, it was interesting in that open letter. Now I really wish I had it. She said something about the deceptive uh, video. Uh, um, um, da 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 da. But in Des Moines at Planned Parenthood, we don't harvest body parts. Well, you were really uh, gratified to know that. You probably are able to sleep more soundly yeah. to know. But it was funny because if she's admitting that <coughs> other facilities that are hooked into the Planned Parenthood network were harvesting body parts for money, uh, <laughs> then then how much deception can she really allege, huh? And you know, I I. I don't know if we'll ever end abortion. You know, do you realize that we've killed 60 million American citizens through I, abortion? I, I did know that that was approaching the number since the uh, 73 yeah. Roe v. Wade decision. That's a fifth of our population right now in America. Don't black you th- Lives Matter, Mac. You know, what is the proportion uh, of, oh, the, yeah. of the blacks that are murdered by abortion versus the white counterparts? It's dramatic. And again, we go back to their founder. Uh, what's the woman's name? Uh, Margaret Sanger. The eugenicist. Margaret Sanger. Margaret, Margaret Sanger. Sanger, the eugenicist. She set out just off, off screen. We were talking about the Nazis. Uh, they were eugenicists. She is, too. And to even to this day. Even even people like Barack Obama and black leaders defend Planned Parenthood when part of their initial founding angle and even today is to eliminate a disproportionate number of blacks from our society. Um, yeah. Yeah. I wonder I wonder what would happen if we had uh, 40 million more black people uh, in this country. Uh, 
they'd still be a minority, but boy. They, they would be a much larger percentage yes. than the 13 to 15 percent, whatever it is that and, they are, man. And who did we kill? Did we kill a president? Did we kill a senator? Did we kill a preacher? Did we kill the person that's supposed to solve uh, or find the cure for cancer? Who did we kill? God's plan on this earth. Every purpose, every person has a purpose. And with 60 million plus growing every single minute, we just killed another one in that five seconds. We killed people that God sent here for a purpose, his purpose. I don't well, know. Mac, we could have killed a radio host uh, 56 years ago, right? That's right. That's right. I, I, I've told the story. Uh, I was adopted, and uh, when I was 18 years old, uh, I had a uh, spinal tap, and Bergen Mercy Hospital in Omaha was experimenting on DNA and the theory of DNA, though they collected my DNA, ran it, and I was able to find my biological mother. And uh, she told me, she's a nice woman, great woman. I talked to, talked to her today, in fact. Um, um, she told me that if Roe versus Wade had been legal right. in 1958, I, I wouldn't be here. Right. And that would mean that my son and daughter wouldn't be here, and my three, grand, my three grandkids on that side of the right. wouldn't be here. Right. I, I just, you know, it's, it's no wonder, Chris, that God sent Jesus. Because we have just, we have just, we are evil. Forget the little sinner part. Boy, the pendulum on that sin part is evil. We kill babies out of convenience. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Incredible. All right. We're going to take our last break. And when we come back, we'll talk a little bit of politics. Did you also want to touch on the markets, too, before we go, Mac? You yeah, yeah, I do, because I, I know you follow the markets. And the big news yesterday, they dropped, what, 270 points? Well, at one point, the Dow was down over 400 points. Okay, but still, Dow's at, what, 16,000? No, it's 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 low over 17,000 right 17. Now. All right, we'll talk about that. And also, hey, your voice, I always want to hear it, 244-0077, live right here on The Truth. <laughs> Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you. Sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hi, my name is David Burrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30, right here on webcast1live.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement. Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there. Rockton Prevention is celebrating 25 years of creating a caring community. We want to say thank you to the tens of thousands of Rock High School mentors that have carried our message of health, love, and encouragement to over 1.5 million children, teachers, and parents. Our mentors teach children methods and skills to prevent bullying and drug use. Thank you to all the school administrators, teachers, and counselors for the opportunity to serve you. Rock on, fair citizens. Rock on. This is Pat McManus for Rock and Prevention, the Richard O. Jacobson Foundation, and this station. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Minutes before the top of the hour, uh, Hank, the Bible Answer Man, next, one eight 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 ask hank uh, it's a nationwide live show. We love to hear it when folks from Des Moines call up. That means you're listening, and we appreciate you listening. Uh, tomorrow is Testify, 12 noon, Urbandale Pizza Ranch. John Sorensen is going to give his, Severinsen, excuse me, is going to give his testimony. It's absolutely free. If you want to eat, just buy the buffet or buy whatever, but it's free. And, and I, I, 
think about this for a New Year's resolution. That once a month, the first Wednesday of the month, I'm going to go to testify and I'm going to hear somebody's testimony. Because I'll bet you, I'll bet you a big old piece of chicken. I'll bet you the whole buffet that God has something inside of John's testimony tomorrow that he wants you to hear. You ever lay in bed on a Sunday morning or Saturday night when you're getting ready to go to mass or church or wherever you go and and you just, you wonder if there's something I'm supposed to hear today. Is there something at that Bible study I'm supposed to hear? Because I'm convinced. See, God's brilliant. He invented IQ. His IQ is over the top. It is the top. He knows that sometimes the only way he's going to be able to get your attention is when it comes out of another sinner's mouth. And tomorrow, John's going to say something. You're going to hear it, and you're going to go, oh, that's me, or that's the answer, or that's the proof. So I I just hope you take time, mark it on your calendar, first Wednesday of every month uh, here, testify. All right. So Mark, uh, Dow Jones is at 17,000. Yesterday at one time it was down 400. It ended at 270 down. Why Mm -hmm. why was that a big story? Well, I think it shook a lot of people up. Um, 270 into 17,000? Mac, I'm going to give you my thoughts as they've been for some time. I don't know if you and I have had a lot of discussions about it, but I'm going to tell you and your listeners and worth what may be paying for it here. But I have thought for some time that the market is artificially being pumped up and that we have a large balloon. Uh, When the Dow bottomed out over six years ago, it bottomed out at about 6,500. In 08. Right. And it topped out uh, this last year in earlier part of 15 at about 18,000. Okay. Rough numbers. Um, I think that through zero interest by the Federal Reserve, uh, artificial manipulation, they have now trillions of dollars on their balance sheet, uh, we have pumped up the stock market. And the rest of the economy hasn't benefited. Uh, And the other thing, there's a lot of things, but one of the things that was driving the commodity markets for years was China. And China was buying base commodities of all sorts, using them, stockpiling them, and they were a big driver of, of the demand for commodities. They are no longer doing that. The China uh, economy has tipped over significantly, and I think you will see a contraction in worldwide demand for commodities. We see oil prices, Mac, not that long ago. We saw oil over $100 a yeah. barrel. We were talking about Texas economy, and now it's down at about $36 a barrel. And I would not be surprised uh, in 16 to see it dip into the 20s uh, before it, uh, you know, before it ends up where it's going, uh, mid-east problems aside. So what I'm saying is that if you have a lot of your money in the stock market and you think every dip, as many of these young people have not even experienced what mm. we would call a bear market, mm. they only think that the bull is out there. Yeah. And every dip is not a buying opportunity. If you flip that bull around, we have banged our heads on that previous high on the S&P and the Dow a number of times in 15, unable to take it out. The lows made yesterday, if you say, okay, well, I'm skeptical of what Tom is saying. I think the stock market's still bullish. If we take out those lows made yesterday on the S&P and the Dow, look out. Because the next thing in view are those summer lows. Look out when those are taken out. I think the Dow, which is sitting right now above 17,000, will come on back down and at the very least we'll look at a 50 percent retracement which puts the Dow back at 12,000. Oh my gosh. So and I'm not saying that would be the bottom but that's my comment that's what I've been thinking for quite a while. I think we are continuing in a deflationary environment. The Fed raised the interest rate for the first time in their December meeting. They are bound and determined they're going to raise it some more but I will also predict that before they get outside the boundaries of 20 2016, they will have to turn around and loosen back up and do some extraordinary things because I think we will join much of the rest of the world in a recession that uh, they will have little choice but to do all they can to try to stimulate, even though it's a little avail. Yeah, we, we, uh, uh, we're in the process of buying some properties, and we noticed that 
our interest rate went up just a little after the Fed's raised the interest rate. But we're still, I gosh, I think we're financing a 4.3% or they something. Missed, the Fed missed their opportunity some years ago where they could have raised the rates and gotten back up close to what normal rates should be. Um, but they miss that opportunity. And now as the rest of the world starts to contract and go into their recession in varying degrees, Europe, China, uh, Asia, we will join them and they cannot afford to continue to raise the rates. So that policy, I think, in 16 gets reversed and they start dropping rates back to zero, maybe even lower than zero, and doing some other stimulation that we haven't even tried before, some direct funding of public projects. Well, and I've always found you to be... Uh Correct, uh, what, well, like three out of five times? <laughs> yeah. well, I mean, nobody's perfect, well, but you've been pretty good over the years. Well, I, I think this is pretty clear. A six-year unabated rally in the stocks is overdue for a major turn. All right. Uh, Chris, before we go, we were talking about this open letter in the Des Moines Register from this person who works at Planned Parenthood. Oh, give me the line that she said about this, what God, this is what God wants her to do. Is that what she's implying? This is Dr. Jill Meadows. She's a medical director of Planned Parenthood of the Heartland. She wrote an uh, opinion letter here. It starts out, I am an abortion health care provider, comma, and I am proud of what I do. She said it is a privilege to be a positive presence in a person's life at a time when she most deserves care and compassion. Uh, she goes on to uh, talk about how the fetal research um, that's done fetal tissue research done by these aborted babies is good and life-saving. She goes on and says, I will continue to follow my conscience and my God-given calling of being an abortion care provider. Our doors will stay open no matter what. I, 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 I'm, I'm going to try to get this woman on the air and I'll be nice to her. I promise I'll be nice. But I, I, I want to I find out whose God she follows. What, what God does she follow that she thinks God's called her to kill babies? Is I, I, what else has that God go, called you to do, Jill? I'm, I'm just curious. I mean, the whole, the whole open letter, you know, you're just a liar. But Shall you, we make a wager whether you can get her on, Mac? No. I, I, I'm going to give you odds here. No, at this point. No, <laughs> no, they won't come on because then they have to defend themselves. <laughs> and, get three and, when to I, one. and when I prove that they're lying, then, I'm, then they call me dirty names and walk out the door. That's all they got. They're low information voters. But the whole thing about the, the, the open letter is disgusting enough. But to, <laughs> to to call out Invoke, that yeah. God has asked her to do that isn't that blasphemy? Well, I, I, I would I would assert that most likely Jill does not believe that abortion is killing a human being. She believes that it is fetal tissue. Uh, she she has believed the lie that says that it is not a child and she's not killing babies. All right. We'll see you tomorrow. Remember, more than ever, we need to forgive people who have wronged us and people we have wronged because as we forgive, we will be forgiven. I'll see you in church.